TEPS Listening Comprehension Test. In the listening comprehension section, all content will be presented orally rather than in written form. This section contains five parts. For each part, you will receive separate instructions. Listen to the instructions carefully and choose the best answer from the options for each item. Part 1 Questions 1 through 10. You will now hear 10 individual spoken questions or statements, each followed by four spoken responses. Choose the most appropriate response for each item. Now let's begin part 1. Number 1. Would you like more coffee, sir? A. The coffee's brewing. B. This is enough, thanks. C. No, just coffee, please. D. Yes, I have too much already. Number 2. Karen, have you been waiting for me long? A. I'm still waiting to see. B. No, I got here late too. C. Apologies for the delay. D. Yeah, I'll be there soon. Number 3. Hey, you never responded to my email. A. My email wasn't long. B. Oh, I was expecting a reply. C. You'd better contact me soon. D. Sorry, I meant to write you. Number 4. Can I get an aisle seat on my flight? A. I have no preference. B. Sorry, you must remain seated. C. Unfortunately, they're all taken. D. I'll see which flights are available. Number 5. When's a good time to discuss our sales presentation? A. I'm not busy now if you're free. B. Check with me about meeting times. C. Yesterday's presentation was well done. D. As soon as we're done with it. Number 6. Hi, this is Brad returning Paula's call. A. I'll return her call later. B. She's unavailable right now. C. She hasn't called back. D. Please have her contact me. Number 7. That volleyball game was close right to the end. A. I just hope it will end soon. B. Right. It was quite one sided. C. Yeah, we won by a landslide. D. The finish was so nerve wracking. Number 8. I wish we hadn't seen a horror film tonight. A. Same here. Now I'll be up all night. B. Then let's watch another one. C. Next time, let's see a scary movie. D. It's too bad we couldn't get tickets. Number 9. You were right. Cindy backed out of helping me move. A. C. You can depend on her. B. She always pulls through. C. You're not the one that volunteered. D. I told you not to get your hopes up. Number 10. John's rude remarks to Julie were so out of character. A. Julie ought to make it up to him. B. He was uncharacteristically courteous. C. I'm surprised he didn't bring them up. D. I wonder what made him snap at her. Part 2. Questions 11 through 20. You will now hear 10 short conversation fragments, each followed by four spoken responses. Choose the most appropriate response to complete each conversation. Now let's begin part 2. Number 
Hello, may I speak to David, please? Sure. Can I ask who's calling? This is Mary, his classmate. A. I'll tell him you called. B. You have the wrong number. C. Hold on a moment, please. D. Nobody here is named David. Number 12. Do you have any room vacancies? Yes, we have two standards and a deluxe. Is the deluxe room larger? A. Unfortunately, it's not available. B. No, but it has an ocean view. C. It's the same size as the deluxe. D. The deluxe costs more. Number 13. Excuse me, is the post office nearby? It's back the way you came from. Oh, do I have to go far? A. No, it should still be there. B. I'd say about two blocks. C. It hasn't been there long. D. Well, I'd try once more. Number 14. Let's make tacos tonight. We just had them a few days ago. I bought all the ingredients already, though. A. We can save them for later. B. But you know I love tacos. C. Then we'll have enough food. D. I'd rather stay in for dinner tonight. Number 15. What brings you in today, Mr. Smith? Hi, Dr. Kim. I've been getting intense headaches. How long has this been going on? A. About two weeks. B. Only when I get a headache. C. Mornings are the worst. D. They last around three hours. Number 16. The protests across the city are really escalating. They do seem to be getting out of hand. I'm afraid they'll soon turn into riots. A. Let's just hope it won't come to that. B. Thankfully, the protesters are dispersing. C. I doubt the protests will take place at this rate. D. Law enforcement has calmed things down since then. Number 17. When will the train from Freetown arrive? Which one? There are several. The express train that departed at 2 p.m. A. It should depart soon. B. Freetown's an hour's drive. C. That's due any minute now. D. Express trains leave every hour. Number 18. Congratulations on your new niece. How's your sister feeling? She's resting well at home. Would it be okay if I stopped by with flowers? A. You can come by before she has the baby. B. It'd be better to give her a few more weeks. C. No, they haven't arrived yet. D. Sure, she's still at the hospital. Number 19. Are you accepting Beaumont University's admission offer? If I don't get into Dunley University. But I thought Beaumont was your top choice. A. It is. Dunley's just my backup. B. I've had second thoughts about it. C. Right, but I might not get accepted. D. Well, Dunley offered a full scholarship. Number 20. I'm glad I stayed in this weekend. I thought you might have gone to the music festival. Not this time. The lineup of artists wasn't impressive. A. Yeah, you should have just skipped it. B. At least you got some fresh air. C. True, most were pretty obscure. D. I hope you enjoyed the show regardless. 
Part 3. Questions 21 through 30. You will now hear 10 complete conversations. For each conversation, you will be asked to answer a question. Before each conversation, you will hear a short description of the situation. After listening to the description and conversation once, you will hear a question and four options. Based on the given information, choose the option that best answers the question. Now let's begin Part 3. Number 21. Listen to a conversation between two friends. I've been so busy preparing for my business trip next week. Do you need help with anything? I'd be grateful if you could look after my dog while I'm gone. Sure. What do I need to do? Just come by once a day to fill his bowl and walk him. Okay, I can do that. Question. What is the woman mainly asking the man to do? A. Check on her house daily. B. Help her prepare for a business trip. C. Care for her pet while she is away. D. Keep her dog at his place. Number 22. Listen to a conversation about a blind date. Thanks for introducing me to Sarah. She's a sweet girl. Of course. How'd the date go? Great. We really seem to hit it off. I knew you would. Yeah, we had plenty of things to discuss. You should ask her out again. Question. What is the main topic of the conversation? A. The man's plan to take Sarah out again. B. The man's impressions of his first date with Sarah. C. The man's desire to be introduced to Sarah. D. The man's reason for going out with Sarah. Number 23. Listen to a conversation between two friends. Frank, could you help me with something? Sure. What is it? The lady who was supposed to edit my dissertation backed down. So you're looking for someone else to do it? Yes. Would anyone you know be interested? I'll put the word out to my colleagues. Question. What is the woman mainly asking the man to do? A. Help her find another editor. B. Recommend her as an editor. C. Edit a colleague's dissertation. D. Find her an editing job. Number 24. Listen to a conversation at a department store. How may I assist you today, ma'am? I'm trying to find a Father's Day gift. You can't go wrong with a tie. This blue one is a steady seller. It's nice, but I got him one last year. I was actually thinking of a wallet. A good choice. We also have a great selection of hats and belts. Thanks, but I'll stick with my first idea. Question. What will the woman buy for her father? A. A tie. B. A wallet. C. A hat. D. A belt. Number 25. Listen to a conversation between two friends. What a cute mug! Where do you get it? I purchased it at a ceramics festival at Century Plaza. Is that still going on? I'd love to check it out. It was only on last weekend. Too bad I missed it. Is it held regularly? This year's was the first, but it'll be an annual event. Question. Which is correct about the ceramics festival? A. The man made the mug there. B. It runs through next weekend. C. The woman attended it already. D. It had never been held before. Number 26. Listen to a couple make vacation plans. Which vacation package should we go with? The one at Palm Resort or Blue Oasis? Well, Palm Resorts is $400 cheaper. And it's for six days, not five. But it doesn't include excursions. Nor meals. The Blue Oasis one includes excursions and meals, right? Right. 
But I don't mind venturing off the resort for food. Do you? No, I actually prefer it. Question. Which is correct according to the conversation? A. Palm Resort's package is the shorter of the two. B. Meals are not included in Palm Resort's package. C. Excursions cost extra in Blue Oasis's package. D. The woman prefers to dine within the resort. Number 27. Listen to a conversation about a book. Frank Egan's latest book, Home Again, is riveting. Really? The critics' consensus is that he's lost his touch, and I agree. No way! The characters are all so true to life. Didn't you find the conclusion a letdown? I'll concede that it was disappointing. Right. I probably won't bother reading the sequel that's coming out soon. Question. Which is correct about Home Again? A. Most critics have acknowledged it as Egan's best work. B. The woman found its characters realistic. C. The woman regards its conclusion as its strength. D. A follow up to it is not expected to be published. Number 28. Listen to two people discuss stocks. How are your technology shares doing? They're right where they were when I bought them. So you're still waiting for the spike that you predicted? No, that happened right afterwards, but I didn't sell them then. And they fell back down? Yeah, now I might just offload them. Question. Which is correct about the woman? A. Her shares are now lower than they were originally. B. Her shares fell immediately after her investment. C. She sold most of her shares after a price increase. D. She is considering selling the shares she owns. Number 29. Listen to a conversation between two friends. Have you been keeping up with the baseball playoffs? I haven't watched much recently. You were really into it till the end last year. That's because the Eagles were doing so well. Well, at least they made it to the playoffs again this year. Yeah, barely. But now there's no team left to root for. Question What can be inferred from the conversation? A. The Eagles did not make it to the playoffs last year. B. The Eagles are no longer in championship contention. C. The man does not usually follow the Eagles. D. The man expected the Eagles to win this year. Number 30. Listen to a conversation about a political rally. I can't believe all the protesters that tried to disrupt Ron Burton's rally last night. Well, he's been stirring them up with his rhetoric. Still, he has a right to be heard, like any other presidential candidate. True. I do think they were too aggressive. He deserves credit for cutting the event short to avoid escalation. Yeah, it was getting ugly between the protesters and his supporters. Question. What can be inferred from the conversation? A. The protesters delayed the start of the rally. B. The woman supports Burton's public statements. C. The man was among the people protesting Burton. D. The rally ended before breaking out into a serious conflict. Part 4. Questions 31 through 36. You will now hear six short talks. After each talk, you will be asked to answer a question. Each talk and its corresponding question will be read twice. Then you will hear four options which will be read only once. Based on the given information, choose the option that best answers the question. Now let's begin part four. Number 31. Good afternoon, staff. It's time to plan our annual office get together. We're wondering what you'd all like to do this year. Jill Cooper will once again be taking care of the arrangements for the event. So, please email her your suggestions by this Friday. 
Then she and I will make a decision and announce it sometime next week. Question. What is the speaker mainly asking employees to do? Good afternoon, staff. It's time to plan our annual office get together. We're wondering what you'd all like to do this year. Jill Cooper will once again be taking care of the arrangements for the event. So please email her your suggestions by this Friday. Then she and I will make a decision and announce it sometime next week. Question. What is the speaker mainly asking employees to do? A. Attend an office event. B. Sign up to attend an office event. C. Propose activities for an office event. D. Find an organizer for an office event. Number 32. Welcome to tonight's mayoral debate between incumbent Mayor Julia Houston and challenger Peter Snyder. As moderator, I'd like to point out a few things to keep the debate running smoothly. Please limit responses to the time allotted and do not interrupt when your opponent is speaking. Most importantly, please stick to the question at hand and refrain from leveling irrelevant personal attacks. And now, without further ado, let's begin. Question What is the main purpose of the speech? Welcome to tonight's mayoral debate between incumbent Mayor Julia Houston and challenger Peter Snyder. As moderator, I'd like to point out a few things to keep the debate running smoothly. Please limit responses to the time allotted and do not interrupt when your opponent is speaking. Most importantly, please stick to the question at hand. And refrain from leveling irrelevant personal attacks. And now, without further ado, let's begin. Question What is the main purpose of the speech? A. To present debate topics to be discussed. B. To remind participants of debate rules. C. To explain the format of a debate. D. To introduce the participants in a debate. Number 33. Good morning, everyone. Have you ever wondered why we feel jet lag? When we fly across time zones, we travel faster than our biological rhythms can adjust. This results in jet lag, a temporary disorder that lasts until our internal body clock adjusts to the new time zone. When traveling west and thus extending the day, we need about one day of recovery for each time zone crossed. But when we travel eastward and the day is shortened, more time is needed. For instance, eight days for six time zones. This is because the average person's biological cycle is longer than 24 hours. Question Which is correct according to the lecture? Good morning, everyone. Have you ever wondered why we feel jet lag? When we fly across time zones, we travel faster than our biological rhythms can adjust. This results in jet lag. A temporary disorder that lasts until our internal body clock adjusts to the new time zone. When traveling west and thus extending the day, we need about one day of recovery for each time zone crossed. But when we travel eastward and the day is shortened, more time is needed. For instance, eight days for six time zones. This is because the average person's biological cycle is longer than 24 hours. Question. Which is correct according to the lecture? A. Recovery from eastward flights takes a day per time zone crossed. B. Our bodies are slower to recover from westward flights. C. Recovery from jet lag is faster with a shortened day. D. The biological cycle's duration affects jet lag recovery time. Number 34. Let's talk about one of the most famous duels in American history the duel between political rivals Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton. The two men had been adversaries since at least 1791, when Burr snatched a Senate seat from Hamilton's father in law. But what prompted the duel was Burr's loss in the 1804 election for governor of New York, partially due to Hamilton's opposition. Although duels at the time were rarely fatal, The 1804 event resulted in Hamilton's death, 
and the end of Burr's flagging political career. Question. Which is correct according to the lecture? Let's talk about one of the most famous duels in American history the duel between political rivals Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton. The two men had been adversaries since at least 1791, when Burr snatched a Senate seat from Hamilton's father in law. But what prompted the duel was Burr's loss in the 1804 election for governor of New York, partially due to Hamilton's opposition. Although duels at the time were rarely fatal, the 1804 event resulted in Hamilton's death and the end of Burr's flagging political career. Question. Which is correct according to the lecture? A. Burr defeated Hamilton for a Senate seat in 1791. B. Burr and Hamilton were on good terms prior to 1804. C. Political duels were generally fights to the death. D. The duel failed to revive Burr's career. Number 35. In today's astronomy lecture, we'll take a look at the planet Kepler 438b, an Earth like planet that's 470 light years away. It's 12% larger than Earth, and though its mass is unknown, It would be only 1.4 times greater than Earth's if the planet turns out to be rocky. The star that it orbits is a red dwarf that has a lower temperature than the Sun and is about half the Sun's size. While Kepler 438b gets more light than Earth does, it is similar to Earth in temperature, meaning it could potentially support life. However, Kepler 438b's host star emits radiation bursts that might render the planet uninhabitable. Question. Which is correct about Kepler 438b? In today's astronomy lecture, we'll take a look at the planet Kepler 438b, an Earth like planet that's 470 light years away. It's 12% larger than Earth, and though its mass is unknown, it would be only 1.4 times greater than Earth's if the planet turns out to be rocky. The star that it orbits is a red dwarf that has a lower temperature than the Sun. And is about half the Sun's size. While Kepler 438b gets more light than Earth does, it is similar to Earth in temperature, meaning it could potentially support life. However, Kepler 438b's host star emits radiation bursts that might render the planet uninhabitable. Question Which is correct about Kepler 438b? A. Its mass is confirmed to be 1.4 times greater than Earth's. B. It orbits a star that is cooler than the Sun. C. It receives lower levels of light than Earth does. D. Its surface temperatures make it uninhabitable. Number 36. Ladies and gentlemen, synthetic food dyes have been used for decades. The reason is simple. They make food look more appealing, which is good for business. Yet many studies have found possible links between these chemicals and adverse health effects. Do we have to wait until an absolutely conclusive causal relationship has been established before we take action? These dyes have no nutritional value, so why keep using them if they could be dangerous? Some food companies are taking notice of these concerns. But it would be more effective if the government took action. Question. Which statement about synthetic food dyes would the speaker most likely agree with? Ladies and gentlemen, synthetic food dyes have been used for decades. The reason is simple they make food look more appealing, which is good for business. Yet many studies have found possible links between these chemicals and adverse health effects. Do we have to wait until an absolutely conclusive causal relationship has been established before we take action? These dyes have no nutritional value. So, why keep using them if they could be dangerous? Some food companies are taking notice of these concerns, but it would be more effective if the government took action. Question. Which statement about synthetic food dyes would the speaker most likely agree with? A. Their health risks have been overstated. B. Food companies have been too slow to phase them out. C. They hardly change the appearance of most foods. 
D. The evidence for their negative health effects is compelling. Part 5. Questions 37 through 40. You will now hear two longer talks. After each talk, you will be asked to answer two questions. Each talk and its corresponding questions will be read twice. However, the four options for each question will be read only once. Based on the given information, choose the option that best answers each question. Now let's begin part 5. Numbers 37 and 38. Now for local news. Greenberg City Council has voted to move ahead with a pilot program that would partially privatize garbage collection. The city will begin seeking proposals from companies to take over collection of trash in 25% of city neighborhoods. The city hopes to select a contractor this fall and begin privatized garbage pickup early next year. The collection of recycling will be unaffected. The program will explore whether privatizing trash collection results in savings to taxpayers. All council members, with the exception of Councillor Edward Morrison, were in favor. Morrison stated that even if a private company can perform the service more cheaply, the move will cost unionized city workers their jobs. Question number 37 What is the main topic of the news report? Question number 38 Which is correct according to the news report? Now for local news. Greenberg City Council has voted to move ahead with a pilot program that would partially privatize garbage collection. The city will begin seeking proposals from companies to take over collection of trash in 25% of city neighborhoods. The city hopes to select a contractor this fall and begin privatized garbage pickup early next year. The collection of recycling will be unaffected. The program will explore whether privatizing trash collection results in savings to taxpayers. All council members, with the exception of Councillor Edward Morrison, were in favor. Morrison stated that even if a private company can perform the service more cheaply, the move will cost unionized city workers their jobs. Question number 37 What is the main topic of the news report? A. A decision to test partial privatization of trash collection. B. The public backlash over the privatization of trash collection. C. A union's attempt to fight the privatization of trash collection. D. The choice of a private contractor to take over trash collection. Question number 38. Which is correct according to the news report? A. The majority of city areas are not included in the plan. B. The selected private contractor will begin work this fall. C. The program will include the collection of recyclables. D. The program was strongly supported by Councillor Morrison. Numbers 39 and 40. Class, today we'll be discussing the history of the ejection seat. Before the development of the jet aircraft, there was little need for an ejection seat, which launches a pilot out of a plane during an emergency. In the 1920s and 30s, pilots could jump out of their planes with relative ease. However, this exit method became impossible as aircraft increased in speed. Even if pilots were able to escape, many of them would be knocked unconscious by the plane or severely injured from the wind blast. During the 1940s, the Germans developed the first ejection seats and placed them in their jet fighters. In 1942, when one of their test pilots lost control of his plane, he became the first person to escape using an ejection seat. Eventually, ejection seats came into wide use. By 1944, the British began witnessing German pilots ejecting from their aircraft. After several tragic fatalities, Such as the death of jet test pilot Douglas Davies in 1943, the British recognized the need for ejection seats and started developing their own versions. These early seats were not very effective, but over the years, they underwent improvements and are now fairly reliable. Question number 39 When was the ejection seat first used successfully in an emergency? Question number 
What can be inferred from the talk? Class, today we'll be discussing the history of the ejection seat. Before the development of the jet aircraft, there was little need for an ejection seat, which launches a pilot out of a plane during an emergency. In the 1920s and 30s, pilots could jump out of their planes with relative ease. However, this exit method became impossible as aircraft increased in speed. Even if pilots were able to escape, many of them would be knocked unconscious by the plane or severely injured from the wind blast. During the 1940s, the Germans developed the first ejection seats and placed them in their jet fighters. In 1942, when one of their test pilots lost control of his plane, he became the first person to escape using an ejection seat. Eventually, ejection seats came into wide use. By 1944, the British began witnessing German pilots ejecting from their aircraft. After several tragic fatalities, such as the death of jet test pilot Douglas Davies in 1943, The British recognized the need for ejection seats and started developing their own versions. These early seats were not very effective, but over the years, they underwent improvements and are now fairly reliable. Question number 39 When was the ejection seat first used successfully in an emergency? A. 1930. B. 1942. C. 1943. D. 1944. Question number 40. What can be inferred from the talk? A. Germany's ejection seats were far less reliable than Britain's. B. Ejection seats were designed to be used at relatively low speeds. C. Britain copied designs of ejection seats from captured German jets. D. Britain developed ejection seats a few years after Germany. The listening comprehension section is now finished. Please wait for directions from the proctor before you turn to the next section.